Although our app works right now, it's not something you'd want to ship onto the App Store. It has at least one major usability problem, and the design is, well, let's say substandard. Let's look at the usability problem first because it's possible it hasn't even occurred to you. When we read date.now when our app runs, it'll automatically say, when do you want to wake up with the current time, 5.21 p.m. And so we have up here, our default wake up time is now, it's whatever time it is right now. And although the app has to handle any sort of wake up times, you know, we don't want to exclude folks on night shift, for example, I think it's safe to say a default wake up time between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. is gonna be useful for the vast majority of users, not 5.21 p.m. To fix this, we're gonna add a new computer property to our content view that contains a date value referencing 7 a.m. of the current day. This is surprisingly easy. We're gonna make a new date components of our own, then use calendar.current.dateFrom to convert those components into a full date. And so, in our content view here, I'm gonna say var default wake time is a date, var components is a date components, components.hour is seven, components.minute is zero, and then return calendar.current.date from those components, but nil coalesce to dot now, just in case it fails for some reason. So, it's a small change, but now you can use that for the default value of this wake up thing here. So I'll say our wake up should be default wake time, like that. Now if you try compiling that, you'll see it fails. And the reason is we're now trying to access one Swift property this one here, from another Swift property, wake up. And Swift now doesn't know which order the properties were made in. So this is not allowed. The fix here is simple. We can make this default wake time a static variable, which means it belongs to the content view struct itself, rather than one single instance of content view. And turn means default wake time can be read whenever we want doesn't rely on the existence of other local properties. And so we'll change this to be static var default wait time, and that fixes our usability problem. I press Command R, we should see a default wake up time of 7 a.m. Much, much nicer. The default value is closer, at least, to what most folks are gonna to wanna to choose. As for our styling, this requires more effort. A simple change is to make this thing use a form rather than a vstack. So I might say here, change vstack to be form. And the whole thing, bang, immediately looks a lot better. You can see it sort of snapped into roughly the right kind of shape. We get a clearly segmented list of inputs rather than just things sent in a bunch of white space. But there's still a major annoyance here, which is that every view inside the form is one row in the list. So there's a nice divider here and here and here and here and here and so on when really all these text views relate to the thing directly below them. They form a, a distinct logical section each time. Now we could use section views here with our text views as title, using section with a picker inside. Instead, we're gonna wrap each pair of text and component below, like this one here, in a vstack, so it seems a single view as a row in the list. And so, let's wrap these up uh, in vstacks now, I'll say there's a vstack around this one with alignment of uh, leading and spacing of zero, like, oops, this, boom. That is one group there. And the same thing for desired amount of sleep, like that, and then daily coffer intake and the stepper below. So there's three sections to our thing. It still has one section on the screen, but neatly divided up like that. The last change we're gonna make is small but magical. Have a look at this code again, this stepper right now, coffee amount cups. 
And we've written cups like this, cup parentheses S. Because in English we have one cup of coffee, but two cups of coffee, and weirdly zero cups, plural of coffee as well. Um, and this is a cheaty way to do plurals. If we'd written just like one cups like that, it would look weird in the screen because now it'd say one cups, two cups and three fourth. It's not right. Similarly, if we had just cup, it'd be right for one, but then wrong for everything else. So one cup, two cup, clearly still wrong. We could correct this with a ternary operator. So like this, we could say, uh, if in here, coffee amount is equal to one, then write one cup. Otherwise, write coffee amount cups. And that'll work better. We get one cup, two cups, three cups, and so forth. That's a simple way of doing it. But SwiftUI has an even better solution, which it can handle the pluralization for us. It's under the code, you want to change it to an exact string. It's very precise. You want to say a carrot, a little, little hat, square brackets around the whole string like so, and then inflect true in parentheses like that. It is an odd syntax. But the result is this, one cup, two cups, three cups, and so forth. This is an odd syntax. It just is odd syntax, right? This is clearly <laughs> very, very strange. It's actually a specialized form of the markdown formatting language. It's a comment, uh, common text to use in the web. Uh, this tells SwiftUI that the word cup needs to be inflected, i.e. pluralized, to match whatever's inside the coffee amount variable. Which in this case means when coffee amount is one, cup remains as cup. When coffee amount is two, three, four, whatever, or zero, cup becomes cups. And now, run the app one last time because it's done.